Brilliant. Well done. You. Can you see me? For, can you all see me here? So I'm going to keep it brief, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and we'll start by saying, I want my country back. Over the last year or so, I've had to do a lot of soul searching on my political journey. And it was laughing. And I don't expect much in politics other than to be able to speak my mind and speak on behalf... Is that you, Harry, laughing? <laughs> speak on behalf of my friends, family and my constituents. Now, I might not know a lot of these long words some of the people use in Parliament, but I know a few short ones. Uh, but unfortunately, this sometimes leads me to be labelled as controversial. Controversial in my opinions. But my opinions are not controversial. There are opinions which are shared by millions of people up and down the country. It's not controversial to be concerned about illegal immigration. It's not controversial to be concerned about legal migration. It's not controversial to be, you know, worried, concerned about the Metropolitan Police and a failing London mayor and the hate marchers, the street crime and the shoplifters literally getting away with ruining businesses on a daily basis. It's not controversial to fight back in a culture war, a culture war that is sweeping our nation. I am proud of our great country and the gifts it has given to the world over hundreds of years. Gifts like the Industrial Revolution, railways, culture, sports, medicine, such as vaccines, which have saved hundreds of millions of lives. And we've defeated fascism in two world wars. We have always punched above our weight on the international stage. But now, like millions of people in this country, I feel that we are slowly giving our country away. We are giving away our way of life. We are allowing people to erase our history. We are giving up our streets to a minority of people who literally hate our way of life. We are allowing people into our country that will never integrate and adopt our British values. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. And quite frankly, some of them need to get out more. I made some remarks a few weeks back about the London Mayor, for which I was stripped of the whip in the, from the Conservative Party. And let me be clear, right now, on this stage, I will not apologise. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in Reform for a while, and Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. People will say that I've took a gamble, and I'm prepared to gamble on myself, as I know from my mailbag how many people in this country support Reform UK on what they have to say. And like millions of people up and down the country, all I want is my country back. Now, this may sound offensive to the Liberal elite, but it's not offensive to my friends, my family, my constituents, and some of my donors. Constituents like my mum and dad, who told me they could not vote for me unless I joined Reform UK. My parents are both nearly 80, and they get it, and I must not let them down. As I said at the beginning, I want my country back. Thank you. Brilliant. Well done. Fantastic. Yeah? Fantastic. So, um, thank you for that. I'm going to take some questions from uh, members of the media and the press. We'll start with uh, the People's Channel. Chris Hope, GB News. Uh, Chris Hope from GB News. Lee Anderson, on the 2nd of January, you said reform is not the answer. It leaves the door open for Sir Keir Starmer. What has changed in 10 weeks? And how can voters trust you at the election when you so publicly betrayed the Tories? Well, over the last 10 weeks, we've seen... Well, one thing, big thing changed last week, Chopper, and that was uh, Mr Galloway coming into Parliament. And we have to fight back as a, as a country. And the only party that's offering that fight back, what I can see, is Reform UK. You know, this is, this is a big problem. It's a concern. It's worrying my constituents and constituents, people up and down the country, who are worried about people like George Galloway getting into Parliament. We have to fight back. And unfortunately, the Conservative Party and the Labour Party won't fight back. This party will fight back, and that's why I've joined. I and mean, there is another big difference, Chris. On the 3rd of January, I said that we were facing a recession, that you cannot grow the economy with the burdens that I identified them, of the highest taxes, the highest wasteful government spending, nanny state regulations, mass immigration, and net zero. A month later, I was proved right. Sadly, the economy's in recession, as I said. 
For two years per person, we are in recession. That's what's changed. There's a massive, massive wake-up call. I hope that helps. Beth, you next. Thank you. Mr Anderson, um, you talked there about a lot of soul search, and you were a Labour backer, then you were a Conservative MP, now you're defecting to reform. What do you say to people that say the problem isn't all these parties, the problem is you, and this is all about attention seeking, and this has been very disloyal to Rishi Sunak, who made you deputy party chair, and also to other colleagues that have backed you very verbally in recent weeks and are probably very upset and angry with you that you're going to only hurt their chances in a general election. What's your answer to them? Thank you. Country, constituency, and then party. Next question, please, Richard. <laughs> what, sorry. No, no, next question. What do you please. say, question, what do you say Beth, that, to your colleagues the answer, Beth. who feel really let down this I've morning? Given my answer. Beth, next Beth, question, please. Millions of people who trusted the Tories to deliver Brexit, to reduce immigration, they're the people who count, the voters, not the representatives in Parliament. That is the difference. We focus on the concerns of the British people. OK, let me put... What's your message to Mr We're going to move next. We're going down the line. He hasn't answered my question. Well, Alison. Hello. How confident are you that people there will stick by you now you switch parties? Some are opposed to reform. I had 4,000 emails last week in my inbox. I got a sack full of mail as well, not just from my constituency, Alison, from all around the country. And when my friends and my family and my staff are telling me to join the Reform Party then I have to listen. You know, like I said to Beth earlier, my country comes first, then my constituency, then a political party. And that's answered all your questions, Beth. Chris Mason, BBC. Thank you, Chris Mason, uh, BBC News. We've seen in the past, Mr Anderson, uh, def defectees from the Conservative Party trigger a by-election. We saw mm. it with Douglas Carswell, we saw it with Mark yeah. Reckless uh, joining the predecessor party yeah. of, of UK. Why not do the same right now? Well, you're talking about Mark Reckless. It'd be pretty reckless of me to suggest a by-election when we could have a general election in May. There's your answer. Why not go for it, though? Well, because, right. because it costs a fortune. I think, actually, millions of people are sick of parliamentarians wasting taxpayers' cash. We've got a general election within weeks or months. Actually, what we've got to focus is getting the message out yeah. to the British people about the choices and the option. And that's the joy of democracy. Different parties, Harry. different views. That's Harry, great. Harry, Harry Cole. Harry. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Anderson. Um, just a few weeks ago, you described Mr. Tice as a pound shop Nigel Farage, yes. whose reforms answered <laughs> Diane Abbott. Yeah. What made you change your mind? And question to Mr. Tice: Do you, do you agree with what uh, Mr. Anderson said about the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan? Do you stand by those comments, and you're happy to share a platform with him? Look, I absolutely, and I think millions of British people endorse the concerns and sentiments of what Lee was saying, which is that we are sick and tired of our streets being taken over by these pro Hamas extremist, anti-Semitic uh, people and Islamist extremists. That's the concerns that people want to hear about. And, um, you know, in terms of pence, pounds, I tell you what, maybe you know, if you look after the pence, the pounds look after themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and also, on that point, um, Harry, somebody described uh, you as a pound shop Glen Owen. Oh. And I didn't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, next. <laughs> Thank you. Harry Horton, ITV News. Um, Lee Anderson, you've had three political parties now uh, in six years. Um, how long are you planning to stick with reform? And why should people trust you, uh, given that clearly your own political beliefs seem to be changing? No, my, no, and, Harry, and, and, no. and Richard, for you, um, how many of the Tory MPs are you talking to? And realistically, do you think any more will switch to reform before the general election? Well, first of all, my political uh, beliefs have never changed at all. Um, I believe in pol I think politics is quite simple. You listen to what people have to say, then you go to that place and carry it out, and it's that simple. And we're not doing that. And I think this party will allow me to speak on behalf of not just my constituents who are furious with what's happening in that place, but millions of people up and down the country. And like I said before, it's co my country has to come first, and I'm scared of what we're doing at the moment in this country. We are giving this country away, and it's got to stop. And to answer your questions, uh, I will be surprised if uh, there are not more uh, other MPs from other parties who don't join reform before the general election. Could be wrong if it's called a week on Friday, but uh, otherwise I'll be surprised. Labour. Uh, who's that? Um, yeah, Gary. Gary Gibbon, Channel 4 News. Thank you. 
Um, if I understood uh, your new party leader when he was doing the introduction, he said Britain's broken and the Tories broke it. Do you agree? I think every, every party is broke. It. We, it's not just the Tory party, it's the Labour party, it's Parliament, Gary. It's the whole like of Parliament. What he said, is it? Oh, listen to what I have to say. It's the whole of Parliament, the whole, the whole system, the whole democratic system in this country is rigged. It doesn't represent, really, what people are saying. I live in the real world. That's a place called Ashfield, Gary. It's just it's a junction 28, if you ever want to pop in. When I go into the pubs and shops and walk down the street for the weekend, people are talking like me. They're talking like Lee Anderson. They're not talking like you lot or the MPs in there. They live in the real world and they've got real concerns about the cost of living, about migration, legal migration, illegal migration, Stuff like that. They're talking about, you know, the crime on the streets, the shoplifting, the fact that you can't get a police officer turn up to, to, to your house if it gets burgled, the fact that people are pulling their own teeth out, you can't get a GP appointment. So I'm here to speak up for them, not for you, Lol. Andy. Thank you very much. Um, Andy Bell, 5 News. Hi, Andy. Uh, Lee Anderson, haven't you just made it much harder for your Conservative colleagues who are fighting to try and hang on to their seats? Haven't you just helped? Keir Starmer win the next election. Do you feel comfortable with that? Somebody, um, Andy, has to make a stand. And I said it last week, there's 650 MPs in that building over there, and if not one can speak out for the good of this country, then, quite frankly, what's the point in being there? I have to live with my conscience. My conscience is clear. When I go and see my parents yesterday on Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day, Mother, and they say to me, Lee, you need to join reform. But this country needs saving. Uh, we're absolutely fed up with what's happening on the streets of London. We're fed up with what's happening up and down the country. We're just fed up. We need change. If my parents are saying that, then I, I can sleep, sleep well at night. I've got a very simple message. Vote Tory, get Starmer. Vote reform, get reform.